I'm gonna mute you all now. And along with the YouTube videos that I send out to the group, don't forget um, that I also put a lot of these videos of class on the Select Health Fit Zone channel, but I also have started to just put them publicly on my own YouTube channel. Not as many, but a few of them. The ones that I think are, um, you know, the most helpful perhaps to a broader group of people. So you're welcome to join me there too. And that would be, um, the link to that would be the same as the meditation ones. It's just that those are unlisted and these ones are public. So, all right, let's get started. So as you come to your comfortable seat, we're gonna sit for a few moments and particularly use the sense of sound. Um, there's a, the meditation that we did on Monday used three senses, but we're just gonna use one today because we don't have as much time to move your sitting bones and make sure that you're in a comfortable position where you can be long through your spine. So think about your low back and if it tends to round back, then sit up a little bit higher so you can tilt your pelvis a little bit more forward, your belly a little more forward, and then lengthen up through the back of your neck. And as you let your eyes close or maybe soften, you're always welcome to keep your eyes open if that's more comfortable for you. Just take a moment here to begin to feel and notice your breath. And as you feel and notice your breath, notice the parts of your body where it expands and contracts. Add a little tiny bit of shifting through your seats and your sides to find a little bit more length now. And now as you keep that awareness on your breath, start to notice the sound of it. What does your breath sound like moving in and out of your body? As you notice the sound of your breath, bring your breath even more into your body, so much that maybe you can hear your heartbeat with your breath. And if you can't hear your heartbeat, maybe imagine what your heartbeat sounds like. And now bring your awareness outside of you to the sounds that are around you in the room that you're in. It might be obvious sounds. They might be subtle sounds. And allow yourself to just notice the sounds. Bring your awareness back to your breath inside of you. Noticing the sound that it makes. And 
Maybe even noticing the sound of your heartbeat. And now see if you can hold the sounds outside of you and the sounds inside of you together. And now draw hands together to connect at heart center and take a moment to hold both sounds inside and out together. And now being present with both the sounds inside and out, bow towards your own heart center. Now softly open your eyes and release your hands down and begin to gently take in what's around you. And as you take in what's around you, start to move through your shoulders, rolling the back. You're welcome to turn your head side to side and take in a few more sights, a few more sounds. And then tuck your chin down as you keep rolling back with your shoulders and take in the connection that you have with the ground. And now lift up through the crown of your head and slowly stop that movement through your shoulders. Take your hands behind you to clasp or you can always bring fists to your low back. Lift up and open through your heart space, lifting your shoulders. And as you press your palms together, keep your elbows bent and hugging back. Feel your shoulder blades start to engage. Lift your heart space up just a little bit higher. And then notice the back of your neck. Lengthen the back of your neck as opposed to dropping your head back. Keep your spine in, in line. So as you keep your C-spine or your neck in line, this actually creates more of an energy, energetic place for you to be able to breathe and connect. So take another big inhale, lift your heart. And exhale, release your hands. Take your hands, fingertips to connect in front of you. Press your fingertips together. Take a big exhale and press back through your upper back, expanding into your thoracic spine or your rib cage, your shoulder blades, your upper back. Take a deep breath. Then inhale, lift up and open, switch the cross of your legs. And as you move your sitting bones, just notice the connection that you have with your sitting bones and whatever you're sitting on. And now you're gonna bring right elbow out in front of you, make a 90 degree angle with your elbow, straight out from your shoulder. You're going to hold on to your elbow with your left hand to keep it right where it is. And now we're going to knock on an imaginary door to the right of us. So you're keeping your elbow stable, and this is helping us start to warm up through the connections of your rotator cuff. So you have this external arm bone rotation that I talk about a lot in our classes. Why? Because I've had to work on it a lot in my own body. And so we, we get to find that place of movement before we come to some maybe more challenging things like some core. We'll do a little bit of core, but I promise a little bit of child's pose in between. <laughs> All right, and then release that. Go ahead and give your arms a little shake and just notice the difference between your arms. I know for me, that little bit of movement warmed up that joint. So just notice. And then left elbow, and then make a fist. And then front elbow to shoulder blade. Draw your shoulder blade onto your back, okay? 
and then hold on to your elbows so you're keeping it stable. Right hand stabilizes, and then begin to knock on an imaginary door to the left of you, or a window, or I did um, a private session with, with uh, someone in my family over Zoom, and, and she was like, can I imagine that I'm knocking on my grandkids? Because sometimes they just don't listen. So knock on whatever you need to. <laughs> Good, okay, and then go ahead and release your arms down. Roll your shoulders back. As you do so, keep long through your neck. Often when we roll in this direction or work hard through our shoulders, then we tend to dip our heads down. I like to call this chronic cell phone neck. So we get to retrain our necks. Okay, shift forward onto your hands and your knees. And we'll get a little bit more work to happen through our rotator cuff with some scapular push-ups. And I'm gonna take my sweatshirt off for now so that maybe you can see a little bit hard because I'm wearing all black and my mat is black, so I apologize for that. But as you come to wrists under shoulders, knees under hips, tuck your toes under. This provides a little stability through the muscles, through calves and shins, and then up even into your glutes. So push your toes down and even push your knees down. Let your low glutes fire up a little bit. It's a little bit of stabilization. Now rotate your elbow pits forward and push. And as you push, you'll maybe feel that expansion of your shoulder blades coming apart on your back. Now inhale, draw your shoulder blades together, but keep that external arm bone rotation where elbow pits are drawing forward. And then expand as you exhale, lifting up through that space in between your shoulder blades. Inhale, shoulder blades come together. And exhale, shoulder blades come apart. So as you keep moving with your breath, you're keeping your head lifted to the back plane of your body. Again, it wants to dip down here. And as you move with your inhales and exhales, the tricky part is if your shoulder blades don't have a lot of movement there, then sometimes we end up bending our elbows. We have two more here. I want you to try to keep your elbows straight. Yeah, good, okay. So now push, expand into your upper back, keep that upper arm bowl rotation, now push your toes into the ground and lift your hips up and back. Downward facing dog. If that's in your practice, if it's not, you can stay with your knees on the ground here. But otherwise, if you're in your down dog, knees are bent, sway your hips side to side, getting longer from hip to armpit. And now keeping elbow pits rotated forward, inhale, come forward into your plank. You can always bring knees down here. Exhale, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward into plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. We're gonna go through three more movements here, warming up more through the shoulders and the chest. And as you do so, you're keeping that rotation of your upper arm bones, which is tricky. And just remember that this movement can always happen with knees on the ground. Okay, now knees down, hips to heels, take your child's pose. And if you want to, to give your arms even more of a break, if it feels good, bring your arms back alongside your body. Let your head rest down, take a deep breath. And now inhale, rise back up to your hands and your knees. You can use blocks here if you would like to, to help you step your right foot forward in between your hands, starting to get a little bit more into the hips and a little bit of a quad stretch. So now back thigh, you're gonna work your back knee back as far as your body is ready for, for a little more length through your back thigh, okay? Center off your hips, drawing your right hip crease back in space. And then lift up and open into gratitude. Elbows are hugged in, palms are turned up, we're expanding here with that rotation of your upper arm bones, thumbs moving toward the wall behind you. Tone your low belly and your low ribs. Use an exhale to help. Inhale, lift your heart up and open. Exhale, hands come down to the floor or your blocks and switch legs. Right knee steps back, left foot steps forward. 
Work your right knee back a little bit further so that you have that length through your back thigh. Left hip moves back in space and then rise up. Lift up into the gratitude place. This was taught to me by a physical therapist years ago and it has stuck with me because I really think this is a great way to find that expansion through your chest and the engagement through shoulder blades. So take a full breath. Exhaling, hands come down to blocks or the floor, your choice. Step back with your left knee, step your right foot forward. And this time, if it's in your practice, you'll stretch straight up with your arms. As you stretch straight up, take a big breath and pulse a little bit. And as you pulse forward and back with your hips, just notice that back thigh, getting that little bit of a stretch. You might feel it through a longer hip flexor called the psoas which is what tends to get tight as we sit or as we walk up and down stairs, take a big breath. On your next exhale, both hands come down to the front of your mat and step back with your right knee. Step your left foot forward. Again, work your back knee back, center off your hips and then lift up. If it's in your practice, arms reach. You can always come back to gratitude one of my favorite places to be. Take a big deep breath. If you're lifting your arms, rotate your arms so that you're broadening the tops of your shoulders. It's like you're trying to turn your palms back. Big breath and pulse. Just a little bit, not a really extreme pulse, just enough to notice the hips shifting forward and back. Good, one more. And then hands down to the front of your mat. And step back to hands and knees. And from this place, set yourself up, wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Rotate elbow pits forward and push. Push your toes down, lift your hips up and back into down dog if that's in your practice. Take a full breath. And now from down dog, or if you're in your hands and knees, then step your way forward. Either way, coming into forward fold at the front of your mat. And this first one, especially, you're welcome to have your feet wider than your hips. That sometimes is a nicer thing to do for your low back, your hips, your hamstrings. A little bend to your knees. And then inhale, lengthen part way, extend your heart forward. Exhale and fold over your legs as deeply as your body needs. And sometimes that means putting your elbows up on your knees or staying up even higher with your hands. Okay, this is still a forward fold. Take a big deep breath. Send your sitting bones up. Then whether you're in a really deep fold or hands up to your thighs, work your hands up to your thighs and then walk your way all the way up your legs to come to stand. Feet inner hip distance apart and parallel now. Lift and spread your toes and then root down with your toes. Take an inhale and stretch up overhead. As you stretch up, reach through your fingertips and even lengthen even more. Little bend to your knees, root through your feet, pull your low belly in. Inhale, lift your chest up just a little bit higher. Exhale now, fold over your legs, hinging from your hips, knees are bent. Inhale and lengthen part way. Exhale and fold. Let your fingertips, again, you're always welcome to use blocks or something resembling blocks to bring the floor up a bit. Work your right foot back into your lunge. Take a full big breath here. Center off your hips, drawing your left hip crease back in space. Extend your heart forward. And then work your front leg towards straight. Not all the way if you're a hyperextender, you're gonna keep that little micro bend. But wrap your right hip, or just kidding, your left hip back in space. And then bend your back knee, tilt your sitting bones up. Extend your heart. Inhale, bend into your front knee. And then exhale, work your front leg towards straight. Again, tilt your sitting bones up and send your left hip back. Inhale, bend into your front knee. And exhale, work it towards straight. Then inhale, bend into your front knee. And turn and plant your back heel to so your foot is parallel to the back edge of your mat. Bring left elbow to your knee, right hand to your hip to turn in the side angle 
toes variation to the right side. Push down with your elbow on your knee and move your shoulder blades onto your back. Take a deep breath. As you work that front knee into a bent place, keep wrapping your glute down and under on your left leg, turning your knee open to the left side. It's like it's trying to move toward the pinky toe edge. Big deep breath. Exhale. Both hands come down to the front of your mat. Tuck your back toes under, bring your back knee to the ground, and then work your hands to the inside. And from this place, you can always have something underneath your hands. Full work down low, coming down toward one elbow, maybe two elbows, and take a deep breath, coming into your variation of your alligator pose. That might be just one elbow down. That might be staying with both hands on the blocks or the floor, okay? So you find your variation. You're bending into your front knee and wrapping your left glute. So your knee is turning more toward the pinky toe edge. Take a big deep breath. Push down with your back knee. Let your back thigh lift a little bit. Yeah. Good. Okay, walk your hands to either side of your front leg. And now you're going to either step back to hands and knees, or you're going to lift your hips up and back to a downward facing dog pose. Take a really big breath wherever that is for you. Rotate elbow pits forward and from your lats, push out through your hands. Inhale, come forward into your plank. Take a moment in your plank to just push. And as you push, push your hands, push your toes, tone your belly, and now grow longer, extend your chest forward. Again, knees can always be on the ground. You're gonna have one more deep breath here. Then knees down, hips to heels, take a child's pose. Then inhale, rise to hands and knees. Exhale to down dog if that's in your practice or stay on hands and knees. Just take one more big breath to find lots of length. And then walk your way forward, coming into your forward fold at the front of your mat. Blocks for your hands if you would like. Take an inhale, lengthen part way. Long spine, knees bent. Exhale, fold over your legs. Let your fingertips, again, blocks are always an option here. Step your left foot back into your lunge. And then from here, center off your hips. Extend your heart. Take a big, deep breath. Then on your exhale, you're working your front leg towards straight. Send your right hip crease back in space. Little bend to your left knee and send your sitting bones up. Good, inhale, bend into your front knee and exhale, work your front leg towards straight. And as you move with your breath, you're working on keeping that right hip crease moving back in space. As you move, it wants to shift forward. See if you can energetically keep it moving back. One more time. Good, okay, turn and plant your back heel so your foot's parallel to the back of your mat. Bring right elbow to your knee, left hand to your hip. And energize, push through your right elbow to lift up and out of your shoulder. Put both shoulder blades onto your back. Move your right knee more to the right side using your glute. Turn your belly, turn your heart, take a big deep breath in this variation of side angle pose. Then exhale, both hands come down to the front of your mat. You're tucking your back toes and setting your knee down. Work your hands to the inside. And from this place, again, notice, back knee can move back a little bit to get a little more length here if you want. Work your front shin so it's straight up and down and open your knee up, even as you push your big toe down down. That's a lot, I know. And then work down toward one elbow, maybe two. Extend your heart. If you're really tight, because let's be real, the only people who are not tight in this are those of us who teach yoga multiple times a day, right? This is a tight pose. So notice where that is for you. And if you need to, 
Come up a little ways so you can do longer through your spine. Take a big deep breath. Good, okay. Hands on either side of your front leg. And as you step back into your down dog or your hands and knees, take a moment for a breath. Then lower knees down, bring hips to heels. Take a child's pose in this time with your arms reaching out in front of you if that's comfortable. You can turn your palms up, let your head rest down. Take a deep breath. Then gently push yourself up to your seat. And you're gonna come all the way down to sitting bones. And now I'm gonna take all of your props and bring them close by as you lay all the way down onto your back. And from your back, pull your knees up close to your chest and rock side to side. And now set footprints on the ground and think of your feet walking in a comfortable distance away from your sitting bones. Thighs and knees are hip distance apart. Press your elbows down near your sides. Your fingertips are aiming up and inch your shoulder blades toward each other. Then push your feet down as, it, as you inhale, start to lift your hips up to that place that's right for your body. Create a little hug of knees and toward each other and then reach through your thighs out through your knees. Walk your shoulder blades just a little further toward each other. Push through your feet. Exhale, slowly lower your hips down. And then bring right knee in toward your chest. Left leg extends all the way out against the ground. And then left knee in toward your chest. Right leg extends. And then set both feet on the ground. Walk your feet out wider than your mat. And then take your knees side to side. And as you take your knees side to side, we're letting one side lengthen and then the other side lengthen. Think of allowing as your knees come to the right, your left hip lifts. As your knees come to the left, your right hip lifts. One more time. And then back into center now. Drop your knees in together to touch. And then open your arms up here into your cactus or your tea, whichever feels the best. And with your eyes closed, simply bring your awareness back to the sound of your breath. And as you're ready to, you'll start to shift your way into your most comfortable resting pose. Whatever that looks like for you, that can be releasing your legs all the way out. That can be placing a bolster or a pillow underneath your knees. That can be setting a blanket over your hips or over your whole body. Start to shift into your resting pose or your Shavasana with the intention of completely releasing Completely letting go. And take a deeper breath.
gently add some movement into fingers and toes. And then slowly bend your knees, roll over to one side. And slowly push yourself up to your seat. Stack one hand over the other on your heart space. And for a moment with your eyes closed, tune back into the sound of your breath. And the sounds that are around you. Have a very peaceful and beautiful rest of your day. Namaste.